brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour and Ramsey Personality, also my daughter, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Thanks for hanging out with us, America. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Katie is with us in Los Angeles. Hi, Katie. How are you? Hi. I've been better. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Well, I am a stay-at-home mom of two young kids, and my husband is a business owner. Uh, I've been living with my head in in the sand for the last couple of years as he's managed the money. And I've just recently discovered how poorly he's been doing that. Uh, We are in a a world of debt right now and trying to find a path out of it. Okay. So what, what caused you to suddenly become aware? Um, he called me one day and said, I'm going to tell you before you get home to see the mail today, but we got a foreclosure notice on our house, oh my gosh. Um, which was due to a second mortgage he took out on our house in order to purchase a warehouse for his business. Um, I naively thought, okay, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to cash out one of my 401ks, pay that off get the house out of foreclosure, and then we're going to move forward and do everything right from here on out. Uh, That was very naive. As I started to dig deeper, I realized um, the trouble that the business was in. He has a huge overhead and is not making enough to sustain that. How old are Um, are you guys? I'm 39. He's 42. How long have you been married? Six years. When was the phone call on the foreclosure notice to you? Well, <clears throat> on the house or on now, uh, when on did the he house, call uh, you? What day? When, how long oh, ago did he call you and say? Oh, this was this was back in May. May. Okay, so you've been mm-hmm. you've been gathering more information, and you all have been having more discussions for a couple of months now. Correct. Okay. All right. So, um, what is he now saying? He is, he has a very uh, motivated mindset and he feels like he just needs to keep pushing forward with the business and things are going to turn around any day, any week, and he's going to be able to fix all of this. Meanwhile, it feels as if uh, things are not getting better. Things seem to be getting worse. Twice this month, he's not been able to make payroll for the employees. Um, I've found out about some IRS debt, some property tax that's delinquent. Um, so why are you, if, once you discovered one thing, why does he, why do you not have a conversation when the two of you sit down and he tells you everything? Why are you having to continue to pull the thread on the sweater? Well, eventually he did. Once okay. I found out about the all right. IRS So we're, we're debt, all on the same the total, page today. What's the total debt, Katie? Uh, including mortgages? Yeah. Sure. About four point five million. Okay, and how much is the mortgage on your home? Um, our mortgage is we owe four hundred and eighty on the house mm-hmm. plus the additional the second mortgage, which is four hundred, so about eight eighty. Okay, what what's, the what's the house worth? What's the house worth? Probably one point one. Okay, what's the uh, mortgage on the warehouse? Is there one? Uh, the mortgage on the warehouse, yes, there is the mortgage on the warehouse. We owe about 3.3 on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the monthly payment on that is about 26,000. Mm-hmm. And what's it worth? It's worth 4.1, 4.2. Okay. Is it on the market for right. sale? Yes. I sat down with Good. our it's broker. On, okay. So that's on the market. Is your home yeah. on the market yeah. for sale? No. Okay. And, um, So what other debt is there other than these two? Uh, There's credit card debt, which totals about Mm $120,000. 
There's a personal loan from my parents, which mm-hmm. is 115000 mm-hmm. There is the property tax, which is about 100000 mm-hmm. There are our ridiculous cars, which are 140000 mm-hmm. Are they on the market for sale? No. They need yet. to be today. Okay. Okay. Now, is he... Okay. The, the thing about business is this, okay? You do have to be an optimist to operate a business. And to operate a business in California, you have to be an unbelievable optimist with the taxes and the regulations and the crap you all face, okay? It's unbelievable. So he has to be an optimist or he's dead in the water. So we have to have that category we can put him in. That's a good thing. Um, but what you need to hear, and I don't know the answer to this, is... You need to hear him articulate a detailed tactical strategy, a strategy overall, but the tactical implementation of the, what items are we doing to make this thing profitable? Because all you're describing to me are signs of death of the business. He has some reason, hopefully logically, that there's a reason for life in the business. I don't know what that is. I can't, I'm not hearing his part of that story. It is possible that he's got four things that if those, that if three of the four things levers flip, that he can turn the business around. Okay. But the poor management and continuing to go further, further into debt is a pattern of, I think I can out earn my stupidity. And that's what you need to see him stop doing because it's driving you nuts. Mm -hmm. So the two of you need to sit down and you, you know, it's okay for you to quote require of him. For your peace of mind as his wife, that he show you what the clear path is and exactly what the steps are to get out. Not just if I grip my teeth, it's going to get better. Because if I grip my teeth and keep doing the same thing, it ain't going to get better. It's going to keep doing the same thing. Yeah, and I think a timeline's appropriate too, Katie, because you guys could exactly. sit here in this like exactly. in this cycle forever and ever, and you need an you need an end date, or I would. Exactly. I would be like, hey, I will give you X amount to figure this out, but at some point, you got to just stop it and go get a job. Like we have to clean this up. I mean, it's just so Henry Cloud says in his book, Necessary Endings, that you end something when you lose logical hope that it is going to get any better. Okay, so when do you close a business? You close a business when you have no reason logically to believe it's going to turn around and you need to see something other than all the death signs. You feel like you're sitting beside the hospice patient hearing all the signs of death coming and you've and yet. It's not a hospice patient, maybe. Maybe it's a, just a patient that's got the flu. But that's how you're feeling because you don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on. Um, selling the warehouse is going to be a big lick. That's going to be really helpful. Getting rid of your cars is really helpful. And, um, you know, we got to get back to scorched earth. we got to get this thing right-sized to where we can make payroll and we, get, and we see a path, a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. The two of you need to find that together. Uh, and if you if don't you, see it, Katie, you speak up too, because so far time. the pattern's not been here. IRS stuff. I mean, like it's not looking good. No, he's he ha- he has poorly managed it. That's for sure. But if if there is a clear path, but otherwise we need to talk about how we're going to sell everything off and shut it down. So you're you're right on track, and, and trust your gut. You've got good gut instincts on this. This is the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Sometimes our segments aren't long enough to get into everything. Obviously, the lady with $4.5 million worth of debt, a husband, the business is failing. She didn't know anything about it because she was not involved uh, until a few months ago, and now she's trying to uh, find her way through that, and giving her a quick answer on that's very difficult. But there's some principles that Rachel gets uh, to talk about, and I get to talk about a lot, that weave into a situation like that. By the way, the irony of that call is it's almost exactly where we are, where only I wasn't 42, I was 28. I had $4 million worth of debt, 
Rachel was a brand new baby when we hit bottom, but it took two and a half years of fighting for us to go all the way to the bottom to bankruptcy. So by the time I filed bankruptcy was the year she was born, but Sharon was a full-time mom with Rachel's older sister and had absolutely zero knowledge of anything going on. Not because I was deceiving her. I just didn't ask, nor did I tell. And neither did she ask. She's like, she just classic, whatever you want to do, honey. And just assumed I had a clue. I thought I had a clue and I was wrecking a business. And, um, so there's a couple of things that go with this principles for you guys to use out there, uh, that'll keep you from finding yourself in a situation. They may be so far gone. They don't make it out of that. They may be bankrupt. They may lose everything. We did, um, because we were so far in. So principle number one is men in particular, but ladies too, when you are running a business, it does not give you relational or wisdom permission to keep that all the other side of some kind of wall. Now you don't need to come home and whine every night to your spouse about everything being hard. Nobody wants to hear that. But your spouse needs to be involved in all major decisions that affect the household, and that includes the running of the business, period. And here's why. Proverbs says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, and he will have no lack of gain. And so while my sweet little wife is at home with a little baby and she's a full-time mom with a home ec degree. She is academically not qualified to speak into the operation of my business. But the Bible says that if I listen to the wisdom of my virtuous wife, I will have no lack of gain. The way Sharon says it is, I may not understand, but I have common sense. (laughs) And she throws that around like, like, and she does have common sense. She has wisdom. And so I, after I went broke and I learned that proverb, I no longer make major financial decisions, major decisions of any kind without Sharon and I talking it through and being in agreement. Now, sometimes we argue about it. Sometimes she's wrong. Uh, sometimes she's right. And I hear something I never heard before. And, uh, but I don't, you know, we don't go and buy a $2 million building and then tell her we did it. Um, we can, but we don't. And so we don't, you know, I don't book. We, we run our calendars. We run our budgets together. We know where e- everything that's going on in our time, and everything that's going on in our money. Um, and therefore, we make better decisions. And the added benefit is, that are that it absolutely solidifies your marriage against the storms that will come. Yeah, and being able to, I think, go there with your spouse too is what we talk about so often, is having this knowledge and understanding of who they are. Because usually in those business conversations and or the money conversations, the person and their fears and their you know anxiety around this subject over here or the thoughts of this or the excitement of that like you get to know your spouse in the middle of it too right i mean like there's there's all this added benefit to not only having somebody outside the picture looking in with a different perspective which is so wise and so healthy but you also you're doing stuff as a team and when you're married that's where a rich marriage comes from is that you're on the same team and you're talking about it and you get to know your spouse in the middle of it even more versus again feeling like okay this whole part of our life is over here and I'm not, I'm not going to bring you in. So if you're in the situation where that lady's husband is, you're the husband or the wife, and you're in that situation, you're running a business. As of today, it is now your job to unpack everything that's going on that is, of, that is of note, anything of size. We don't have to discuss where we buy copier paper, okay? But we are going to talk about the big things that are happening in the business. Here's what's going on. Here's how we're running the business. Here's the, the things. And we're not going to move, play, move the, the big pieces around the chessboard without talking about it further. If you are the person who is at home or is not in the business, so to speak, it is your job as of today to know what the flip is going on in your own life. You are not a little child. You have to plug in. 
And if they don't want you to, that's a bad sign. Um, if you're just too lazy to, you don't want to put forth the effort. Oh, he's handling it. I'll let him handle it. That's just laziness. And you're going to make really stupid butt decisions, and you're going to craft a life that you don't like at the end of the story if you don't plug in and make these calls together like two grown-up adults. One of, well, we're not alike. We're, we look at things differently. Absolutely. Two, most of the time, opposites attract. Larry Burkett used to say, if two people just alike get married, one of you is unnecessary. Of course, one of you is a spender. Of course, one of you is a saver. Of course, one of you is an abundance, and the other one's a scarcity. Of course. So what? That, what that means is you're getting good, rounded viewpoints on these major decisions. And you don't reach a point that, oh, I borrowed on our home where our children sleep that to feels, buy a warehouse. Can I say that feels deceitful? Like when you start to muddle the waters, which I know happens a lot in business, but you, you start to reach over to the per like putting that in danger. That that feels like it's well, I don't know why it feels different if it's like, oh, I went and got a warehouse. But my own home, like my home, that feels so personal. I don't like it. That felt that felt deceitful to yeah. me. Well, it's not um, because the the arrangement that you they were think? no the arrangement they were operating on is she don't care he can do whatever he wants and so he did whatever he wants and he had no he had no thought that he was going to lose the home he he thinks it's just going to turn around and he's going to out earn his stupidity <laughs> make all this other money he, he didn't he didn't sit down and it's really sad he didn't sit down and go now I will I will tell you this having adopted this we don't do major things without Sharon it means that I actually have to not only sell myself on the idea of going forward on something I have to sell her for on it. Mm -hmm. And it makes me, it makes me critically think through the idea more right. thoroughly knowing I've got to get agreement from someone else. I've got to be able to explain it in such a way that it makes sense and get agreement. That's why we always talk about don't do your money alone. Even if you're single, have somebody an account, something that you are accountable to, right? Yep. A spouse, a friend, Again, if you're single, maybe it's a mentor, like whatever it is, whatever it's, the situation is. It's hilarious is. that inside of our own little brains, we can talk, we can make the dumbest We're thing. We're crazy. We can make the We're dumbest thing crazy. sound smart inside our own little brains. But when you have to speak it and set it out on the table in front of someone that loves you and that cares about your future, as soon as you set it out on the table, sometimes before they say anything, you go, oh, that's dumb. <laughs> Oh, that's I. And when that was in my head, it was really smart. But when I put it out there in the daylight, it looks really stupid. And it's almost like that time that you had this problem and you sat down with your friend. And by the time you explained your problem to your friend, you knew the answer. And all that is, is your brain had to process from simple digits floating around in your brain into verbalized. When you have to turn something into language, it your brain is required to go through another higher function of critical thinking skills. So when you turn something from a thought into language and put it in front of someone else, it makes you process the thing you're talking about more thoroughly. That's why you already know the answer before your friend ever says anything. You go, oh, I, I, thanks for listening. I now know what to do. And they never said a word. They just look at you like a hoot owl, right? It's like, and, and the same thing's true here. You know, it, it's when you have to do this with your spouse, it opens up everything. It's like right before this show, I was telling Dave about my new prepping conspiracy that I heard last night, and he looked at me like... Like a hoot owl, and he just shook yeah. his head, and we just went to air. Yep. <laughs> it's good to say it out loud sometimes. You're there's, like, oh, I don't know. Well, I don't well, know about that concern. Guess, guess there's one in every family. This is The Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. We've been talking about the Live Like No One Else cruise that is March 22nd through the 29th. It is not yet sold out. Uh, this announcement today will probably sell it out. Big announcement. Blow the trumpets. Da, 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 da. Right, here we go. All right, you ready? We're going to St. Thomas. We're going to Turks and Caicos. We're going to Puerto Rico. We're going to the Bahamas. You knew that. 
It is on a Holland America high-end, nice, virtually brand new ship. You know that. 100% of the people on the ship will be Ramsey people. All people that are baby step four and beyond if they do what we told them to do. And they live like no one else. Now they're living like no one else. It's a milestone cruise. You get to go on this cruise with all the, all the Ramsey personalities. Manit Shohan from the Food Channel. Uh, Dove Award winner. Uh, recent, uh, recently added to the Grand Old Opry, Stephen Curtis Chapman, Dina Carter, country music star, Stephen Bargatze, that's Nate's dad, uh, a couple of other comedians are on there, and here's the big announcement. Drum roll, please. Brrr. Cabins are running low, but just today we contracted with Trey Kennedy, and Trey will be a comedian on there with us as well. If you don't know that name, you should. He's one of the biggest, hottest things on Instagram right now, blowing up everywhere. The guy is absolutely stone cold hilarious. One of his specialties is making fun of me. <laughs> he makes a lot of money making fun of me. And so for some reason, our team thought we should give him some more money to come on the cruise. And so now Trey's going to come on the cruise and make fun of me. Uh, that's fun. That's great. There's a lot There's a lot of really funny stuff out there, uh, memes and so forth, and Trey is the source of some of it. So be sure you check it out. Trey Kennedy, if you don't know who that is, look it up. You should. Uh, it's a huge add to our lineup. And uh, that is the last uh, stone in the arrangement, the last flower in the arrangement to uh, for our lineup. There won't be any more surprise announcements, but there is just a handful of cabins left. So go get your cabin. You can put up a $600 deposit before they're gone. If you want to upgrade the cabin later, if somebody drops out, you can step up into one of theirs. Can't do that if you're not already on board. And so we help you do that. You can't sit around on the outside and hope it works out. It's not going to work out. You're going to miss the cruise. March 22nd through the 29th, seven full days, all the Ramsey personalities, me included, all seven days. We're going to be doing all the events, and it's going to be like the whole tribe is on there. It's like a tribal thing. Cool. So RamseySolutions.com slash cruise. Again, Trey Kennedy, awesome new, brand new entertainer ad today, and uh, you, don't, you don't want to miss this. RamseySolutions.com slash cruise. And Rachel, I... It is disturbing that he doesn't make fun of you or no, John he's Deloney. No, nice. he's nice to me, you know. John Dave, Deloney. you're just an easy, you're an easy poke sometimes, you know. Just. I'm an easy, I'm an easy mark. <laughs> is that what you're saying? I leave, I leave a lot that, out, I leave a lot out there that could be made fun of. boomer vibe, and people is like to go after it. The boomer vibe. Oh, and yeah. People, well, people they, like to go after it. It's a good thing to go after. I mean, well, it's an Instagram thing to go after the boomers, so I get that. Okay. <laughs> we're just mad that y'all bought houses that were... You know, twenty thousand dollars. I bought a house with a bucket you know, of strawberries. All, that's exactly right. That's I traded it, one bucket of strawberries from like. my house. Now it's worth forty-two million dollars. We're all just mad about it. And you could make, eating. you know, twenty grand and be fine in life. You know, just the eighties. And y'all, how were they? And y'all never took economics to find out that those numbers are never, so actually was, not true. Yeah, I was kidding. But they're there. So. But there, it was low though. <laughs> we're just mad at y'all. Amanda <laughs> is in Memphis. Hey, Amanda, what's up? Hey, Dave. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can I help? Um, I need guidance. I need to know. We got a loan on our home. Mm -hmm. And it was, they were not transparent about any of the fees. Um, what do you mean? It's kind of hard to, in all the fees that were associated with the loan, the APR, the only thing we knew was the interest rate. We knew the well, that is the APR. Why did you sign the documents well, if you didn't know what you were doing? Well, when it came to closing, yeah. um, I mean, so the lender was telling us all along that he would tell us the fees once we settled on the percentage that we were going to put down. Yeah. It was pretty cut and dry, Dave. We wanted to walk away from our other home with 75000 under 6% and have a house note. 2000 or under. It was that simple. But it didn't, it wasn't that simple. Well, when you went to the table and it wasn't that, why did you sign it? We didn't know it wasn't that. You didn't sign a mortgage paper that had a blank in it. That's bull. No, 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 didn't say that. Yeah, you my did. Husband, my, okay, but the loan is just in my husband's name. It is not in my name. I don't care. Why did he I'm sign the, it? I'm the one that did all the conversation with the Were lender. you at the table when he's there to sign it? 
I was at the table. And you looked down and the numbers aren't right, and you signed it anyway? Why did you do that? I, I wasn't the signer. But, that, but, but besides that, let me go backwards just a little bit, okay? Because the lender said, okay, 6.375. He said, I'll get you under 6% if you sign with us right now. And so we did that. We got on the computer. We signed with them and everything. And so then it became, um, you know, they wouldn't tell us any of the fees. The underwriter said, we'll get the paper over to you so you will know what all your numbers are before you go to the closing table. And if you need someone there to sit with you, we have someone in your city that can sit with you. And we said, no, let's just wait. And we went through the process. And then we, we go to... We go to the closing, and the closing attorney says, you know, here's here's this, uh, you know, you've already went over this, da-da-da. You know how they go through it. Uh, we went with this company because they said they were going to do everything. So we just assumed that's how it was, okay? When we told them what we wanted to go to, we didn't know what our cash out was going to be until after all the papers were signed. After all the papers were signed, the closing attorney came downstairs with a sheet of paper and a breakdown and said, and you're getting 65000 Like, no, we're supposed to be getting 75000 So we didn't, we, we didn't know anything. They were transparent or not transparent, and they misguided us. We had to pay for points. They never told us we had to pay for points. There were many things, and to the point that I called after the loan, to the underwriter. Okay. And why, why did you not turn around and look at the attorney and say, just tear up the documents? I don't want 65000 That anymore. We agreed to. I'm not, I, we're not doing our this house, closing. Our house was sold. We were, we, we were in a, in a, in a stress. We're both 61. I mean, we were. That doesn't we, mean we, you have to accept a deal. No, we don't have to accept okay. a deal. Just look at him and go, this we isn't don't. what we agreed to. Tear up the papers. We're and not where, doing this. And where were we going to live? Honey? Where were our, so, our so what it amounts to is, is you willingly did this because you felt trapped instead of standing up and saying, no, I'm walking out of here. So I, you're right. You're right about the trap part. I mean, I said, cause you age, felt trapped. We you go. weren't trapped. Stand up, walk out, go rent an apartment and give them the middle finger as you walk out the door. Don't sign stuff and, and then gripe about that you did that what you signed when you sat down like and looked, your husband it. signed it after you sat there and looked at it. If you say, to, if you say to me, you're going to give me the numbers before I go to closing, then we don't go to closing until you give me the numbers. And we don't go to closing. If the numbers aren't what you tell me they're going to be, I look at stuff ahead of time. That was your job. It's not their job, but it's their job to get it to me. It's your job they to don't. not do anything until they do true okay but you like let you said, this happen but like you said at our age and no family to run to you're right we could rent no doubt but we had hey i'm sorry said, darling i'm older than you and i ain't feeling trapped and i don't need to run to my family i'm just gonna walk out the door if somebody's trying to screw me it's that simple i'm gonna stand up and walk out the door like is there any i'm legal- sorry you're not a victim you're not a victim of anything except your inability to look at someone and say no just look at them and say, no, I'm not signing this. It's not what we said. That's who you're a victim of. You're a victim of your own inability to say no. You and your husband should have thrown your shoulders back and said, no, this is not what we agreed to. And walk away. This lender didn't do anything wrong. They were just sloppy at best. This is The Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888 I was telling our team in staff meeting on Monday that um, how we do what we do at Ramsey, helping people with 
God's ways of handling money, grandma's ways of handling money, common sense ways of handling money, how we do it has changed a lot over the 30 years. The advice has not changed hardly at all because it came from the Bible. The Bible didn't change. And it came from common sense, and common sense doesn't change. Now, there was no digital anything when we started. There was no computers. Uh, we, we didn't have a computer. There was no Internet. There was no podcast, for sure. Or YouTube hadn't even been thought of. Um, MTV was quite the rage. But, the, uh, uh, but, you know, it was a different time. In, infomercials were a thing. VHS tapes are what we started with, right? And, and so we were telling the team this. I said, the things that I say that are from God and your grandmother are, are the exact same things I say today. I said back then. It really hasn't even changed. So our producer, James, uh, decided to take upon himself to prove that. And somewhere down in the deep bowels of Ramsey has uncovered a video of me on a TV show, I guess it is, from 1995. 30 years. Almost 30 years. So let's see if I say the same things or not. (laughs) You have very few of these, but a whole lot of these. You're going to like our show today. We're going to talk to a financial expert. His name is Dave Ramsey. <laughs> What's the number one question that you get on the air concerning financial problems? What do they want to know? Concerning financial problems, how to get out of debt. Yeah. How do I get out of debt? And I would say the second thing is communication with spouses. It's the stuff Grandma talked about. So save money, live on less than you make. Two concepts Congress can't grasp. And, uh, we, and then we talk about getting out of debt, the borrower's servant to the lender. And so lay down a plan, have a budget, spend every dollar on paper before the month begins. Because it's more behavior than it is math. Don't spend money you don't have. Understand, when half your net worth is tied up in something that loses 60% of its value in four years, you're not going to get ahead. I don't meet with people with a million dollars and say, gosh, Dave, I got ahead using credit cards and car payments. What solves it is getting mad at it. Some healthy, righteous anger and saying, hey, that's it. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to be weird. I'm going to get this stuff paid off. I have no words. I have no words. Your <laughs> voice was so, you're so, you're, it's changed. How old were the you voice? in that? How old? I was probably about your age. Mid thirties? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You... Well, 95, I was 35. Yeah. I was your age. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah I'm 36. Give there me, you go. give me my year. <laughs> All right. yeah, I'm sorry. That, yeah. And you still use the same jokes. It's a, it's the same a, exact jokes, yeah. It's, <laughs> Live on less than you make. A concept of Congress, Congress can't grasp. grasp. <laughs> now, I did take, um, I had a guy come in and train me for a, a year and a half on, uh, and removed a portion of my accent. So I've got, yeah, I've got, I've got head- a lot less accent now than I did then. That was pretty country fried there. Yeah, that was that, that was, was some pretty, Nashville. Pretty, that was pretty, some eighties Nashville. Pretty southern, pretty southern. <laughs> Sweet tea there, and uh, the little comb over thing. That little I last, know, that little yeah. less vestige of hair you stuck got up there. A little there. bit there. It was still stuck on. It wasn't really a comb you over. Just, just y'all a little... all just look old in those days. Do what? Like you look like you're fifty in that video. Isn't that interesting? Back in the day, I just feel like the way the style was, the way it was well, shot, the, the style, and it, you know, a suit and tie, and. The glasses, the Mr. Magoo glasses. Yeah, you know. I mean, like it just makes you. It just it just but ages you. But what's interesting is if you quit looking at all that stuff, I'm sorry, which is I can't, fun, that's I fun. Just can't it's get fun to make fun of. I'm I'm okay with that. That's good. It's a. But the what I what did I say? Gave every dollar, dollar a in, name. Do a budget. The every and, dollar. And app. now we have the every dollar app. And little did I know there was going to be a, an internet. Communicate and we would have with an your app spouse. Called every dollar. Give every dollar a name and live on less than you make. And cars go down in value. People don't get rich on credit cards and car Cars. payments. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. And, and 35 years later, I'm still saying the same thing, and I have more listeners than we've ever had before at this moment. And I've not changed one thing. I mean, it's nothing new here. Mm-mm. It's very Even new. the be weird element. That was there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you said that. You Just be, be weird. You have to be weird. Be weird. And now, now when somebody comes on does their debt-free scream, we call them a weirdo, right? <laughs> and that's before it became a political thing in the last few weeks. But, yeah, we've still been doing that. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, oh man, they hijacked the word. They they stole my word. <laughs> yeah. I have to. I now I have to clarify that it has nothing to do with the the it's Trump campaign. It's weird because you're just not. Yeah. Not normal. You're not normal. Yeah. And um, you know it's so refreshing though, like that it is. There there is something about longevity in life 
principles in all of life. I think it's probably true within relationships and health, money, like spiritually, all of it, that it that it works. You know, the new flashy way to do something or, or newest thing, it, it doesn't have the proven track record. It doesn't have longevity. And the level of trust you can have in a system and a process that truly has been, yeah, for 30 years, same same freaking thing. Do you get tired of saying the same thing every day? <laughs> I <laughs> for thirty years. I've been doing it for fifteen. Yeah, I've been half of it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. When we look back on this interview right now, this discussion right now, your voice is going to sound weird. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, <laughs> look at that haircut. What is she wearing? <laughs> what did what, where, what? Where did she get that? What? Oh. Uh, that's awesome. Well the, done, James. The style you used to have back then. <laughs> That'll be it. So, but the whole the whole thing is that the truth, something that's the truth, and we're people of the book, we're people of faith, so we believe that the Bible is the truth. The truth does not change, and it's not negotiable with your feelings. And so that's why we've been able to have the integrity to say the same thing over and over and over and over again for 30 five years through several fashion changes yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and not only survive but continue to prosper you guys to can not only survive in the business but be able to continue to help you guys and it still helps you to hear those exact same things from that interview all those years ago so we still say them over and over and over and and that is a type of integrity to stick with something to finish to not quit, to not abandon every time somebody has the, the latest, you know, all of a sudden Bitcoin is the new answer. And, uh, and so we have to stop. No, no, it's not. It's not. All of a sudden, you know, NTF is the answer. No, it's not. Well, credit card points and miles, that's been, that, that game is, has yeah. ramped up. That's been majorly. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, when we started, there were no credit cards accepted in grocery stores and there were no credit cards accepted in fast food. And I remember doing a rant aghast on the air that it was going to ruin the American family, that they could buy their groceries now and go into debt to buy their food. And I remember going off about that. Um, and, you know, now it's not even that. Now it's just delivered to your door, <laughs> your, your door in particular. But, yeah, <laughs> Rachel hasn't seen the inside of a grocery I store do. in no, years. no, no, no. I'll go if I have items. But for I on Mondays I work, and that's why I do my grocery shopping. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Conveniences. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You gotta give and take. People live like no one else. So later <laughs> you can live and have your groceries delivered. I'm sorry. One thing I do for myself. The one, one thing. Th the one th When's the last time you've been in a grocery store? I. Probably not since that video. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, but entirely it's... possible. No, I, I've been there because your mother sent me. But yeah. <laughs> But the, uh, um, <clears throat> I think the point is, is that these principles work and the way that we deliver them, whether it's some, it's, you know, tomorrow we may be on a hologram. I don't know. Uh, tomorrow we may have some, there's going to be another technology in five years or wh what we end up doing with AI to be able to, we're going to use anything that's available to deliver the exact same message over and over and over again. Yeah. And I would say for people that are newer to listening because YouTube and podcasts has become like one of the major parts of, yeah. of this of this show Instagram, is yeah. um, just because something feels simple and kind of boring and like, oh, is that it? Really? You live on less than you make? Kind of that common sense. That's almost the, that's, those are the ones to lean into, right? Like if stuff yeah. starts to get complicated and too fancy and it feels like this like, ooh, thing. So to be confident for people that are new to this, younger people even like, it's been working and it still is helping people get free and control of their money which yeah. is what we want some of the most profound things you'll ever learn in life are easy to understand and hard to implement love your neighbor ouch that's hard this is the ramsey show
All right, Erica's with us in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, Erica, what's up? Hi, George. Thank you so much for taking my call. Hi, Dave. Hey. Hey, what's help? up? Um, so I had a question, and it is pretty much whether or not I should pay off my car. Um, <laughs> I know how it sounds, but um, pretty much I have um, – 19k in savings right now and there's 16k left on my car but right now with the technology there's how much left on your car let me say it again oh 16k 16,000 and you have 19,000 in savings yes and what do you make and that's not including in um retirement savings okay and what do you make 70k okay you're single yes gotcha okay all right what's your hesitation why don't you want to pay the car off um, so, like, with tech layoffs and everything, I just did not want to pay off the car and did not have any savings. With what and everything? What you're saying? You're saying tech layoffs? Do you work for one of the big tech companies? Yes. yes. And there's been layoffs at this company recently? Yes. What do you think the percentage chance is you're going to be laid off? 50-50, 70 um, I'm honestly not sure. They seem to be random. That's so That's comforting. What, what a wonderful well. place to work. Just what do you make? On the chopping block. What do you make? 70. 70. 70. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm an IT security analyst. An IT what analyst? Security, security analyst. analyst. Okay. Oh, good Lord. Why are you only making 70? IT security is huge. Have you shopped around, looked at jobs? Uh, I have, and that's my plan. But, of course, until that happens, I just didn't know. No, no, I want um, your plan to be, like, by Friday. Why would you hang okay. out at this place? It's unstable, unpredictable, and random. That's true. And you can make 100 work in someplace else. That's also true. I think so. I got security people working here, and they have IT by their name. Could be wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'm overpaying them. I don't know. <laughs> it depends on what you're doing. I'm joking around. But I really think you're in a sweet spot. That is a very, very hot field that you're in. I don't know what level of certifications you've got or how far up in experience you are. But I would be poking around out there and see what I can find. Have you heard of Ken Coleman that is on the Ramsey Show here that has his own show on careers? Oh, I have. Okay. Have you got any of his stuff yet? Because I'm going to send it to you. I do not. I just have your stuff, honestly. Okay, that's fair. All right, we're going to send you his book, From Paycheck to Purpose, and we're going to send you the Get Clear Assessment for Career. Uh, oh, and I'm going to throw in another book called Proximity Principle, which is one of his big steps on getting a new job. And I want you to go look for a job. Why would you stay there? Okay, I do understand. No, why would you stay there? Is there a good reason I'm missing? Um... I I don't know there's a strong reason. So I graduated in 2021 um, in the fall, so in December. And so I worked here for like a year and a half. Okay. Well, Erica, here's the deal. If you pay off the car today, you free up a car payment, and you just start saving up that emergency fund again. And even if you do get laid off, there's probably going to be severance with some cash involved. And so you're going to be okay. So I wouldn't let this whole thing paralyze you into not paying off your debt. Exactly. And here's the thing. Okay. Here, here's what's bothering me as the old guy in the conversation, okay? I'm doing that a lot today. But anyway, the um, I don't want you, because we care about you, we love you, we want you to win. I don't want you to have any part of your life paralyzed by a company that is being led poorly. And when they leave their team in a position of uncertainty, feeling that they randomly could be killed at any moment, that's what the, that's where you are. They've left you. They've paralyzed your life. Your life is on hold while you hold your breath to see if they're going to shoot you or not. Right? That's true. And, and I, I want more for you than that. That's why I don't think they deserve you. I think you need to go get something else for your sake because I don't want any part of your life on hold because everything, you're just kind of looking over your shoulder every morning going, when's it coming? When's it coming? When's it coming? 
When are they going to get? You know, when are they going to take me out from the back here? It's when like Hunger gonna Games out there, stabbed in the yeah, exactly. Goodness, the big tech Hunger Games are underway, boys and girls. Yeah, that's true. It and really, you're waiting for a random email to figure out that you got laid off. I mean, there's no indication. You're lucky, you know. And so what you've got is, let me tell you how bad their leadership sucks. Okay, they've got their entire workforce thinking like her. That is not a recipe for productivity, loyalty creativity it is not a a delivery of products it's not a recipe for winning and and so if there's a portion you know uh, leadership if you got a real problem just stand up and go look about 10 percent of you may not make it the rest of you are safe because we're trying to turn the corner here on a mess and the 10 percent that aren't going to make it are going to kind of look like this and so if you fall in those categories you should be you should be holding your breath the rest of you are okay but they got the whole stinking place frozen because they're wusses as corporate leaders. Classic corporate America crap. It's exactly what, what you're that asking is. is for corporate leaders to have integrity. You're, that's asking a lot, Dave. Well, I mean, you can be a corporate leader with integrity, but then you wouldn't be corporate America. So, yeah. Oh my God. So, so a big. Just tech. walking on eggshells. How are you focused at work if you're worried <laughs> that it might be your last day? You're not. All you're doing is looking around, going. Well, You're at the water cooler going. Where did Who's George next? go? Next? George was here yesterday. Oh. It's the um, the rapture, big tech rapture. I feel, but yeah. you know what? Our plan works in good times and bad times. So if that's you out there, the best position you can put yourself in is being debt free with a fully funded emergency fund, and be looking for that next thing. Yeah, check out Ken Coleman's materials. They're all at kencoleman.com, guys. And uh, hey, you know, work for a place that deserves you. And. Um, and we got 1,100 people here. We communicate with them real clearly. Can you imagine? I ain't scared. <laughs> I'll be here tomorrow. This is the Ramsey Show.